So as some of you know, part of what I have felt was my obligation as mayor these near past four years was to take on issues that had been ignored, had been delayed in terms of council action. And we've done exactly that. Everything from uh, the fact that the city did not have a strategic plan, um, our work resulted in the Portland plan, which is a 25-year strategic plan for the city, to the fact that in terms of equity based on race, the city had little focus on it, little focus that was effective. Um, we've now, with the leadership of Commissioner Amanda Fritz, we now have an Office of Equity, an emerging equity plan uh, to the issue that we're going to be talking about today. And that is, it is time for the City Council to end the near 25-year parking wars in Northwest Portland. And we are doing so with the plan for consideration uh, that's in front of you and has been on the website and out for public comment for months. The tenets of the plan are based on our positive experiences of setting up TMAs, uh, Transit Management Associations, uh, in the Lloyd District. Uh, we have set one up in the Central East Side. Uh, we'll be setting another one up next week in Washington Park. When we, uh, when we introduce TMAs, it's to allow for uh, local, very local neighborhood decision making about how best to ensure the availability of parking and the safe and efe efficient function of a transportation system in a set geographic area of, of Portland. Uh, just as a, uh, a background note, uh, Portland has been in the parking meter management business since the 1930s. Over 70 years, uh, the city has been managing the availability of on-street parking and uh, continues to do so and expand when there is an obvious need. In this particular case, as you will notice in the exhibits in the draft plan in front of you, a public uh, concern about the lack of available parking in Northwest Portland is evident in the public opinion research that was undertaken by the steering advisory committee that put together this plan that I'm putting forward uh, to the city council for its consideration. When you have over 60% of your potential uh, customers, in this case, uh, choosing a different place in the city because of their frustration with parking, we on uh, city council need to address that. In addition to that, you have a long-standing frustration of area residents of not being able to park anywhere near where they live. This is a district that has one of the highest concentrations of housing without off-street parking. And so the two combined have resulted in the disagreements around how to move forward to solve this problem of parking have really waged on and become very toxic, unnecessarily so. And it's time we put the parking wars to rest and we allow this great part of Portland, Northwest Portland, to use the energy expended on fighting the parking wars to now solving solutions and uh, working on the betterment of their neighborhood. So um, I, I'm, uh, uh, what I put forward in terms of the draft plan comes directly from the advisory committee. Uh, Commissioner uh, Fritz, who's uh, uh, having served on the planning commission for seven years, seven years um, is always a, a, a key partner of mine on city council when it comes to uh, planning issues because of her expertise and interest. Uh, she has reviewed the plan and, and is going to be making some amendments, which I think are very useful and we both want to hear public comment on. We'll then hear from representatives from the neighborhood association and, and a representative of a local property owner in Northwest Portland. But first, Commissioner Amanda Fritz. Thank you all for being here today. This has been a lot of process, 20 some years of process, and certainly uh, Mayor Adams as Transportation Commissioner uh, in the office that I now hold has done a lot of work on this issue. So we sometimes seem like we have endless process in Portland, and it's important to me, both in respect to the Mayor and also the community members who've been working on this for so long, to bring it to Council and have the discussion. I've had many different groups in my office over the past year expressing their concerns and uh, also expressing their support. And so the amendments that I'm proposing are my best assessment of what 
would uh, set out a process for making decisions moving forward that respect the input that I've heard. I, as always, am very open to public comment at the hearing, and if it turns out that when folks see the amendments that's not what they were looking for, I'm very open to um, making changes again at the hearing. So this is a, an opportunity for public testimony. We apologize for the short notice of uh, next Thursday at 3 p.m. There will probably be a robust hearing so that there will be opportunities for people to come out to work and after school if, uh, to testify. And certainly um, it's posted on, it will be posted on the city's website and online later this afternoon. And so we'll be taking email, phone, and written comments before the hearing. So I look forward to hearing about that. And what, the pro what I'm proposing is to set up a phased implementation approach, which at each step, the transportation management committee will make a proposal which will go to the transportation director and the commissioner in charge of transportation who will then notify the rest of council and if two members of council want to have a public hearing on that next phase then that will happen so there will be uh, it's a very clearly laid out at least I hope it's clear and I'll again be looking for, for feedback on that it's a it's a laid out plan for how we make each step and for doing it in different phases so that the committee will be evaluating how each phase works out and potentially making amendments to the proposed plan or the recommended plan which will become the adopted plan moving forward. So um, I think that might be clear once you see what the amendments are and I'll be happy to take questions later. So to, to using the maps in front of you, which is which are on page 15, uh, and referring to this up here under uh, Commissioner Fritz's implementation uh, proposal, is that the most the part of the district that is most impacted from the activities at Jeldwin Field and that are most vulnerable to folks parking uh, for work in the Pearl, but parking in Northwest. The first phase would be sort of this southwest corner of the district phase, and that's in the first six months, and that will go into place uh, even before the TMA is created. The second phase, then, that she's talking about is the northwest corner in terms of what I'm describing here is, is the uh, parking permits for both uh, proposed 100% for employees at a business and also parking permits for residents. It also the plan includes uh, guest permit coupon books. And then in uh, no later than 18 months than the meters, which are the hatched uh, sections of the district and the solid sections of the district, those would be going in uh, subject to the, the final implementation details of the Transportation Management Association. So with that, I'd like to have uh, quick comments from our, our leader of the uh, neighborhood Association, and then from Rick Michelson with the business or property owner perspective. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. My name's Ron Walters. I'm president of the Northwest District Association. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Adams and Commissioner Fritz for championing this cause. Uh, uh, virtually everyone would agree that parking in Northwest Portland is difficult and getting worse. Um, the, the, the parking wars that, that Sam refers to have been going on for a long time. We're eager to get them fixed. The status quo is not an option in our point of view, so we're looking forward to working on the plan, uh, seeing more details about the TPMA, uh, working with local businesses. Uh, we've had conversations with local businesses, and one of the things we do agree on is that we're all in this together. It's not about having uh, the residents uh, do well and the businesses hurt, or vice versa. Uh, we really need a plan that, that helps everyone out, and we think that this is going to head us in the right direction. So. Um, we're looking forward to having you come to City Council and working with uh, City Council and our, and our business uh, partners in the neighborhood to make this a success over the next 10, 20 years. So, could, thank you. Could you uh, give your first and last name and spelling and title? Sure. It's Ron Walters, R-O-N, last name's Walters, W-A-L-T-E-R-S. Um, I'm president of the Northwest District Association, otherwise known as the NWDA. What else? Address? No, you're no. good. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you'd ever want to do is press yeah. your draft, Some right? Security <laughs> number. Yeah. Uh, Rick Michelson. Yeah, and I'll start out. Uh, I'm Rick Michelson, R I C K M I C H A E L S O N. And I've been a property developer, a resident, and a property owner in the 
Portland in, in Northwest Portland since 1975, and I'm thrilled to be here today. I do have to, however, correct uh, Commissioner Fritz and Mayor okay. Adams. Um, we actually started working on this in 1977, so it's been 35 years that I've been working on it. And until very recently, I still had the punch cards from the original parking count sitting under my desk. Wow. I since passed them into the neighborhood archives. So this has been a long process. It's stalemated three or four times, and I'm really pleased with the leadership we've seen from these council members to get us unstuck and moving forward. Thank you. We'll now answer uh, any questions. And uh, we also have uh, Bill Hoffman and Katja Dillman from my staff here that can also, if it, if you want to have some one-on-ones around yeah. what exactly is can, this, happy to do that. Can you kind of just go, go as an overview, just tell sure. us what we can expect in the coming weeks, uh, what the council's going to do, and, and maybe what those amendments are, uh, the, yeah. the basic ones. So uh, 3 p.m. next Thursday at City Council, they will be considering the draft, uh, adopting the draft plan and map that you have in front of you, and then also considering Commissioner Fritz's amendments and any other amendments that come out of a discussion on the details of the uh, TMA. Um, that is a first reading, so and it's a non-emergency ordinance, so it will move to, um, so there are no votes taken, and Council has the ability then to ask for another work session or the following week it would be a vote. So it would be uh, two work sessions uh, or, or, and the third week would be a vote or it will be one work session and a vote the second week. So it could pass within a couple of weeks. It will pass or fail before mm -hmm. the end of the year. So Mayor, can you just... This is Northwest Parking. I'm, you know, knock on wood. It's uh, only been around since, uh, it was, this problem has been around before Pangea broke apart and North America separated from Asia. Can you describe the changes that will happen? <clears throat> sure. So uh, the first thing is that we are establishing a, a parking uh, management district, a transportation management district, and that is an official designation uh, within how we uh, organize the city. Not every neighborhood, not every district in the city has a parking management district. Uh, Goose Hollow, for example, is a parking management district. It's largely, for example, just a permit, a residential permit district focused district. Lloyd District is obviously um, a, a meter focused district. Um, so we use these to sort of come up with strategies that are hyper local to a specific part sometimes of a neighborhood. Uh, this would have our electronic meters going in as the equipment. Um, and the advantage of electronic meters is, you know, based on past uh, plans that had four-hour parking stays, time stays, that's the amount of time you buy, uh, four hours, the committee suggested three hours in the commercial district. Um, in uh, the Central East Side uh, Parking Management District that the council approved a couple of months ago, it has more, even more refined time stays. So, for example, if you pull into a, the cleaners in the central east side, you will find five minutes, uh, free parking, those kinds of things. I would expect that the TMA and the council should expect that the TMA will refine the time stays before they actually, the meters go into the ground in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, but the beginning, so these, everything I'm telling you is sort of the, the uh, beginning point, the foundation on which the TMA will do its work, and if I could just interrupt for yep. as, as you go along, I may interrupt. For Please you. do. Um, there is an issue. The mayor would describe the boundaries, and there was an issue with a charter school, the Class Academy, that wanted to be in the district so that they could then have access to the permits and the volunteer uh, coupons. So um, one right. of my amendments is to include the Class Academy. Right so. up, right up there. Um, so the. Uh, uh, so uh, right now, what the, the starting point for the TMA's work uh, will be uh, 9 a.m., just like downtown, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., uh, Monday through Saturday, though. Sorry, it's not like downtown. I apologize. It's 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Sunday is free. Uh, the meter pricing beginning is the assumed to be $1.60 per hour. Permit eligibility for both residents and coupon books for their guests and 100% of employees, based on Commissioner Fritz's amendment, would be available. The cost for those are, like everybody else, $60 for a resident, $100 for every additional residential permit requested, 
and $60 per employee per year, and that's standard um, across the city. Uh, permits, permit parking will not be allowed, and this is where it's really active management, permit parking will not be allowed on the solid blue commercial streets. It's $60 per year for the residents? Correct, yep. And one of the things that I'll be working with the new council on is looking into whether there could be a low income as that, uh, difference, but that would be citywide, because we have a lot of permit parking districts. Um, two other things is uh, that I should have said at the very beginning, with those uh, draft uh, letters of intent in front of you as part of this plan, we're also bringing on the potential for 200 additional off-street uh, parking spots at uh, portions of Good Sam's campus and then behind MLC, uh, the off-street parking lot behind MLC. We've also had discussions at, with the owner of the Flanders Street uh, Medical uh, center on Flanders just off 23rd um, who's expressed an interest as well. I think the possibility exists that there could even be additional off-street uh, parking spots uh, made available uh, once we get this plan done. And to further point out, this, this permit zone already exists and this is the stadium impacted zone so another of the advantages of the smart meters is that they can be set at different pricing on different days. When would the permits start to be required and when would the signs go in? Um, Bill, do you want to? Yeah, I think the, um, the direction is to do it after adoption, um, but then there's a process of the ordering the signs, mobilizing to get them installed. So I think we could expect within three months of, of adoption, approximately. The mayor, uh, just one, you know, when, when you talk to people now, that, like you say, it's been going on for 30 plus years, but uh, a lot of people are going to see this when they hear about it, they're just going to say, well, it's just about the city trying to make more money, more revenue off of this. Is true statement? Um, I will tell you that, uh, you know, when you look at the PBOT's budget, if this doesn't go through, then PBOT starts having budget shortfalls, I think, in the third, fourth, and fifth year of the financial forecast. Um, the funding crisis facing transportation, not just in Portland, but in every major city, uh, it, almost every major city in the United States and the state as a whole, is profound. Um, but funding, you know, the reason why transportation funding is so challenged is we have rising costs and we have revenues that um, on a relative sense, uh, relative comparison to demand for services are not adequate. We have more efficient cars, um, we have uh, people driving fewer miles, uh, we have fewer cars um, in Multnomah County, at least according to registration. So uh, this doesn't even begin to plug the gap. Um, but we have also have a profit sharing agreement with the TMA. So. Um, those who say it's just for the, the city to get money fail to understand that there's a profit sharing agreement so that the TMA can make investments back into this district, whether it's for low income permits or where it's for additional safety, uh, additional advertising for businesses. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, um, needs in Northwest Portland that the profits from this district can be applied to. And the committee decides that, and it could also include things like subsidized bus passes. Yep. That's the, the committee would decide that. Uh, Ron, did the neighborhood district vote on this, and how did they vote, and when? Uh, we Can did you get near the, the sure. Line. Excuse me. Uh, we did vote on the plan. Uh, working from memory, I would say it was this spring. So we've been uh, uh, sort of waiting for things to come forward as far as uh, details on the TPMA. So frankly, we're seeing it uh, for the first time today. And how did you vote in spring? Um, it was almost unanimous that um, I think it was 11 to 1 or 12 to 1 Tavo. Um, so, uh, you know, the NWDA felt strongly in favor of the plan. Uh, at the time, we hadn't seen the TPMA, so we asked for details, and we're getting it today. So, um, we'll digest them, I'm sure. Uh, well, we're in favor of the principle of a TPMA, but obviously, the terms of it we're just seeing today. So, we'll look forward to uh, uh, looking through those and uh, hopeful that we'll. And there has been a lot of input over the course of the year, so it's important to me that we do it um, 
with the current council who've been hearing impact input from everyone. Obviously, we this is not about the mayor or I usually do a public process and on other things like the city budget office and some of the other processes. We've had several um, opportunities at council as well as a longer process at this final point. We've had 35 years of process, so I think it's although not ideal that we have to rush it at the end, it's important that the current council um, make the decision on it. Uh, the, uh, the business district is in, um, originally, uh, they sent a letter of support uh, for the plan, um, but that was rescinded, and I think their official position now is in opposition. How does this increase the livability in the neighborhoods, and are the people upset of having to pay the $60 permitting? Um, yes, the main purpose of the entire program is to make it easier for customers and residents to find parking. And parking is a scarce resource and it needs to be managed. And by managing it, you can ensure more availability at the appropriate times with a given number of spaces. So that is the purpose of the plan. Is the simple problem right now, people are parking their car and leaving it there too long? Are, are these people shoppers? Are they parking there, hopping on mass transit of some kind, and going elsewhere in the city? Um, yes. <laughs> yes. yes to all of those. I think the clearest um, and easiest to solve problem is, is the people who park in the neighborhood and take transit downtown. I live on North Earth Street, which is along the streetcar line, and um, the number of people who park actually change their clothes into the work clothes and then walk to the streetcar is, is quite astonishing. This is not about self-interest. In fact, the first phase of the project doesn't cover my street, but it will eventually get there. All right, thank you all very much. We'll stick around if you want to have individual questions. Appreciate you being here.